How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I want to share a product with you from Hobbywing. It is their tunalizer that you can use for analyzing and tuning your electric motors. Uh, now, you can use the tunalizer for any motor. It doesn't need to be with a Hobbywing motor. But what I'm going to go through today is show you, I'm going to go ahead and tune a 17.5 Hobbywing G4R motor. Um, I've been able to run a little bit of stock lately, two different tracks, uh, A-Main Hobbies Outback Raceway and also at HRCR in Hayden, Idaho. Um, so with mod motors or eight scale motors, it's still not a bad idea to have a tunalizer, just you can test your motor when it's brand new. And then if you ever have any kind of feelings of something's changed or anything, you can compare your numbers from when it was new to uh, where it is after some time. And you can also, um, you can do like an auto test or a manual test to where you can basically power the motor full of, uh, through the full range um, just to kind of analyze what's going on with the motor. It's super simple. You can uh, just power it with a 2S battery, so I have a Protec 4800 milliamp um, 2S HV battery. Um, I'll change the camera angle so you can get a little bit of a closer look. I'll go through some of the different settings and then I will go through and do a motor kind of test or run through and show you the numbers that I kind of shoot for with the Hobbywing 17.5 G4R motor. Okay, so like I mentioned, you will power the tunalizer just with a uh, 2S LiPo battery. And it's super simple here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and make sure I connect A, B, and C. Make sure that none of these hit one another. Uh, you also need to make sure you have your sensor wire connected. And so here you can see uh, some of the different uh, features. You can do an auto motor test, which is uh, what we're going to show and do today. A manual test, uh, throttle output, and also settings. In settings, you can kind of change just some basic stuff, language brightness, number of poles, test voltage so on and so forth. But what we're looking to do, so we're gonna do the auto two pole, hit start. I'll just run through its test and then it'll give you uh, a reading here. And so we have the test voltage, the current, this is the KV, end bell timing, and then what each uh, pole was. So test voltage is 7.4. The main number that I'm looking for is what the current. So at 7.4 volts, I'm wanting the motor to pull 6.4 amps. And you can adjust that by adjusting the timing on the end bell. So by just loosening these two screws, this screw here and this screw there, and then you can rotate. So if you go uh, counterclockwise, you're gonna be increasing the timing. And if you go clockwise, you're gonna be decreasing the timing. Now default is typically on the M bell 48 degrees. That's kind of the sweet spot. But when you're making an adjustment here on the end bell, the slightest movement can change this current draw quite a bit. So um, I don't really worry too much about the actual number on the end bell. That's a decent reference or to get you close. But what I'm looking for, uh, my goal is this 6.5. I'm actually at 6.54. Um, it's showing the KV is uh, 3539. End bell timing is 52.1, and then you can see uh, the degrees at each of the poles. 
uh, this is pretty balanced, 52.5, 51.2, and 52.7. Now, um, I've talked with Matty G a little bit about this. Um, he thinks that this 6.5 uh, is maybe a little bit on the high side, but from the running and testing that I've done, um, you know, maybe it varies a little bit, uh, different drivers and driving styles. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not feeling any fade or that the motor isn't getting, you know, hot enough that you're kind of losing power um, at this 6.5 amps. Um, the power is incredible and I'm not noticing any fade in a five minute run. Now, if you're going to run, just go up and practice and you want to run for 10 or 12 minutes, you may want to turn the timing down a little bit, possibly try to run a little bit more gear because um, gearing and that amp draw kind of go hand in hand um, to make sure that you don't overheat or damage the engine or the motor. So we'll do one more test, just the auto test. And again, current is at 6.5. So if you, if you set it to where that current is a little bit lower, um, basically that's just going to draw a little bit less current when you're running. If it's drawing less current, you're going to have a little bit less power, but it's also going to run a little bit cooler. Um, as far as mod motors go, you can, you can tune your motor, um, using the tunalizer, even if you're running modified, but I feel like in modified, you're overpowered. So you're tuning more with the ESC settings than you are uh, actual timing uh, with the tunalizer. But the tunalizer is a great tool to have. Again, you can test your motor when it's new, and then you can screen, uh, take a picture, save that data, and then be able to test test your motor um, just to make sure that nothing's kind of changed or moved. Um, you can in a hard impact, the M-Bell uh, can move slightly um, if you don't make sure that these screws are tight. So um, again, if you just notice or feel any difference on the track, uh, it's not a bad idea to run it on the tunalizer and just check out the numbers, make sure you're, you're kind of in that range and ballpark. Um, again, Matty G has a ton more experience than I do, uh, especially with tuning the stock motors. Um, so he can answer other questions if needed. Uh, these are just basic settings that I found that work really well for me. On carpet, um, I was geared um, 7231 with an MSB1, which has the same transmission race ratio. Um, as the associated car. So um, again, at 7.4 volts, having the current at 6.5. Um, another thing that I did uh, that Maddie suggested at A Main Hobbies was I took out the standard rotor that comes in the G4R and I used the torque rotor. And I felt when going to the torque rotor, I didn't I didn't really lose any top end. It just got to that top speed quicker. Um, maybe on a bigger track, like we ran the half track at Outback um, because they were running on-road on one side and off-road on the other. So maybe on a larger track, you would want to use the stock G4R rotor. Um, but if you're on a smaller track, the torque rotor is something that's really nice to have in your box as a tuning option. Uh, when you change that out, uh, you may have to make some slight adjustments, but again, I still uh, recommend that 6.5 uh, amp draw as kind of the maximum or, or um, sweet spot with the G4R motor.